The first time Donald Trump appeared on a television program was on an episode of The Jeffersons, and he would continue to appear on dozens of television programs over the decades, always playing one person, himself. But it's his next trick that I believe is his very best, because it's the kind of trick you could only learn to pull off from Roy Cohn. You gotta remember, Trump is on the ropes. His company has gone bankrupt multiple times, his businesses are shattered, and everything is in the dumpster. So Trump pulls the most provocative and interesting thing one could do. He vanishes in front of everybody. Because when Donald Trump comes back, he never again builds another building. All he does when he comes back is all branding and licensing and co-sponsorships. I mean, he's vanished into the image of himself. He was a businessman. Now he's a performer being a businessman. But the irony is that he was actually a very mediocre businessman. Well, mediocre to terrible. He's a great performer though. He doesn't have a lot of range, but he is great at playing one role. And that role is Donald Trump. And in that role, he can't be beat. It actually works so much better that you should think carefully before forgiving what the media did to you because when he entered the race, Right away, conventional thinking was, oh, we know who this is. He's a businessman, like Ross Perot. But in a moment's examination, it's clear this guy's not a businessman. Businessmen don't have net worths that fluctuate wildly and no one can tell you how much money they have. That's actually super weird. But if it's not clear that it's a performer as a businessman who has a vested interest in looking gigantic and is trying to cast this illusion, makes perfect sense. And if people had just seen that, they would have known that this guy had been riding the wave of pop culture for the t past two decades and was totally at the top, even when the tides were against him. This guy is incredibly dangerous, and now he's making a lateral move to the completely staid world of politics. He obviously was dangerous, but that's just hindsight talking. And it's very popular to go, where did we go wrong? I mean, it's a question that's been around for thousands of years. Like, even during the fall of Rome when the Visigoths were all running around, I'm sure there were two dudes on a hill saying, hey, when did you think we fucked this up? And if you were to ask me when we fucked this up in modern political history, I would point to a day, sometime around eight years ago, on a Monday, the day that Sarah Palin became the vice presidential candidate. If you forget all the crazy shit that followed after, you'll recall that that was the day everyone on the left lost their shit because they were like, oh my God, she is a sexy mother who wears bikinis and hangs off the edge of helicopters with assault rifles and shoots wolves. We are so fucked. That was the first day. And then the second day, reporters would show up to the McCain campaign and say, hey, remember how you said Palin was against the bridge to nowhere and against wasteful government spending? Yeah, so I read a speech where Palin actually loved the bridge to nowhere and loves wasteful government spending. So could you like square that circle for me? And the McCain campaign would say, where did you read that filthy garbage? And the reporter said, a place called Google, where there are a lot of Alaska local papers and you can read the transcripts of speeches that she said, and I read them. You guys did vet her, right? Now this is an interesting question because normally you vet your candidates, you know, because it's in your best interest and you don't want to get caught with your pants down. How would you get into a position where like you, you don't vet someone? Like, how does that happen? But you have to remember what was going on that year. That year was Obama versus McCain, also known as the punditry called it, charismatic black guy versus boring old white dude. And down in boring old white dude's bunker, they were like, oh man. Obama's awesome. We even want to vote for him. How are we going to beat this guy? Like, what are we going to do? And so somebody stands up and says, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we do a team up of the boring old white dude and the wolf killing woman? Like, that's a good idea, right? Like, that's that's a great idea. Like, we could beat charismatic black guy. I, I don't know. That's, that's all I got. And maybe they got excited and they were just like, hey, I don't know what the fuck. Like, you know, we're going to get fucked. So maybe this works. Does it work? I don't know. But maybe this works. But that still wouldn't explain why you wouldn't vet her. Or maybe it fucking does. Because I think at that moment right there, that was when people at the highest level said, fuck it. You know, fuck it. Just fuck it. Push her through. Maybe it'll work. Fuck it. Nobody knows. Fuck it. Just fuck it. Fuck it. It's a proud American impulse. It's essential anarchism coiled through our puritanism. 
it's actually kind of woven through our national character. In 2012, Trump flirts with running for the presidency, and we now know that he was testing the waters, like he was dipping a toe in and checking the temperature, and he was also building a power base around birtherism. I love birtherism! Oh my god, it is the best conspiracy theory because it's so simple. Anyone who is really into birtherism might as well just wear a sign that says, Hi, I'm racist! Ask me about it! And so the dream with birtherism is that Donald Trump enters the White House and sees Barack Obama in the Oval Office and he strips Barack naked of his suit, except he's now wearing a grass skirt, beads, and a spear, and so Donald Trump shouts and yells, Canyon! And then we smash cut to the Supreme Court who has said, Obama has lied about where he's from and that's bad, and as a consequence we're gonna use our special Supreme Court power to reverse time like in the 1980 movie Superman the movie. And then it's back to 2008 and we have boring old white dude and wolf killing woman. Make America great again, or rather, make America white again. It's not like Obama is even that liberal. Obama's a centrist. So the problem they have with him is not that he's a liberal. The problem they have with him is that he's black. Not that you would notice from the journalists who sit around saying, why is the right so galvanizing? Hint, he's black. Why are they so angry? He's fucking black, okay? It's racism. They're very, very, very angry about that. They are so angry about that that they actually sent Terminators back in time to kill Obama as a child and instead they sent him to Kenya. Sad, really. They are so angry that they've had to live through two terms of a black president and now they think they're gonna get served a woman. And they're all just like, are you fucking kidding me? A woman? A woman Clinton? What the fuck else is next? A polyamorous triad? They're very upset. Upset enough to accept Trump. And the media will say, oh, we didn't see this coming. Yeah, sure. 